Hey everyone, it's Lucid, and we're going to be talking really quickly here about uh, Dominion's six maps. And some of the things that have changed with maps. Um, this is not going to be an in-depth guide on how to make maps or things like that. I'm just going to tell you like some of the features, um, things to expect on release, and then things to expect probably in the next you know six months and year after release. Uh, in terms of things the community will probably be able to, which knowing this community means they will uh, do and create. So um, let's talk about it. Well, the, the biggest change with maps, uh, there's two big ones. The biggest one is there's terraforming, right? So that means tiles now need to update. Never used to be how it was. It used to just be whatever tile it was, the tile it was for the rest of the game. Um, now they have to update so a you know, plane can change into a forest. Um, so for custom maps, which were often hand-drawn, um, probably isn't real realistic that there will be like, you know, 10 different layers, one for each terrain type where you've redrawn the map as if everything's a forest, as if everything's a plain, etc. However, it um, doesn't matter. You can, um, so like this map, and I'm not sure which maps are going to ship with the game, um, I hope, here's what I hope. I, I, I hope there's a lot of maps. Um, I hope there's some good multiplayer maps. That way we're not having to fill up the servers with different maps, but, um, yeah. Um, I hope there's also some of the nice, like, legacy, um, Dominions 3, 4, and 5 maps that have been made. Um, I'll try to get Lucid's uh, Atlas updated and put on there. I won't be able to update all the textures where there's like a, you know, a forest layer, a swamp layer, all the things. But um, old maps which have not been updated are fully supported still. The problem is, is that now if you're like trying to figure out, okay, I need to move from here to here. If this looks like a forest, but it's really a swamp, it's going to be a little annoying to play like that. The good news is that a lot of times, most of the time, provinces aren't going to terraform. Terraforming is really something that happens with a few specific nations, like Late Age Citizen and Asphodel, and then otherwise in very specific scenarios, like once a global goes up, it's going to like turn everything to wasteland or uh, turn everything to forest or something like that. There's some globals that will change scales and have the potential to affect that. But for the most part, there's not going to be a ton of terrain change. But in the event that it does happen, it will be kind of annoying if you're playing on an old map and the terrain's changed and it's not reflected. Um, nevertheless, all the old maps are still supported. So if you like playing on it, especially like single player where there's even less likelihood there's going to be terraforming, um, go for it. Play on like the most beautiful maps you have. So those are all still supported. However, if you want to, um, you can play on a map that, uh, like this one here. So this is a map nuke map, but this one actually supports terraforming. And I'll show you what the game file looks like. But basically, map nuke has been updated. Nuke's been hard at work, diligently working to get this thing updated for Dominion 6. And it's basically rendered out this whole map like 12 times. One time with everything is a waste, one time with everything is a forest, one time with everything is a um, plain, you know, one time with everything is a sea, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the exact same province borders and stuff, just everything rendered differently. And then one time, of course, with things as they naturally are, like with the normal distribution. So um, yeah, so that's really cool. And uh, I've checked it a few times as working. So you can load that in and all the map nuke maps can now be run um, in this, um, you know, in Dominion 6 where you're going to have terraforming and it's supported. So that's super cool and huge thanks and shout out to Nuke for doing that. Um, you can do that manually. So I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so this is that same map folder and uh, you can see all these things are rendered out um, different ways, right? So you could manually make a map that's going to have these layers and they'll get overrun. So, you know, this is the swamp layer. I think in this particular version, it didn't re-render like the, um, the, the the lakes and oceans as swamps, but I think in the current map nuke version, it, it will do that. But it helps you see better that it's you know, really rendered everything is just a swamp. So you can do this manually for any hand-drawn custom map and make it support terraforming. 
Um, as you can see, though, there's a lot of different uh, formats you would have to do. So it'd be a tremendous amount of work to actually do. So I think what we'll see is for most hand-drawn maps, uh, they are going to be not using the terraforming bits. Um, there is an interesting middle ground, and I don't know how that will work for hand-drawn maps. We'll have to see kind of with the community. Um, I'm going to pause and show it to you. Okay, so this is an interesting map. If you look at it, if you're used to playing on like the ill winter um, random maps, you'll be like, huh, this is a little strange. These provinces don't quite look exactly right. They look a lot more similar to something MapNuke might produce. And that's because there's a new file format. It's called D6M, and it's a Dominion 6 map. And um, it's really interesting. It basically can kind of have procedural maps. So what this is, is I made a map nuke map, and Loggy, who's a god of programming and things, uh, he has basically taken something that will take the like a map nuke map, and you put it in the program. I think he might have some things he does manually too. And it spits out a, dot, uh, a D6M, and that will make it so that this map nuke map is now animated, or not animated, uh, illustrated, populated with doodads, textures, from the Illwinter map generator. So you can have like four or five um, like map nuke style in terms of the layout, evenly balanced, things like that that now are populated with the graphics from Illwinter. And this should be possible to do with hand-drawn maps as well. So I have no idea how that will work. I'm actually really interested to see how it will work. And I don't know if you can like mix it, like if some parts of the map can be like this or if it, you know, anyway. So this is another really interesting format. And the cool thing about this is because the train isn't hard-coded, you can, I, I believe, I'm now talking uh, a little bit outside my wheelhouse of what I actually understand. Um, like, this province could have been hard-coded to planes um, in the file that Loggy put in, but it also could just be, like, neutral. And every time you play this map, it'll have the same province shapes, but the starting terrain will be different. So you can actually, you know, from, like, a few saved maps, have, like, a lot of variety. Um, and, yeah. And this is really nice because I'll be honest, the layout, like how things are laid out in vanilla. Let me, so I'll show you now the default way to do this. So, um, you know, if you join a game, the default setting is actually just for like a medium random map. And we'll make one of those. And I'll, I'll show you, let me make sure we have debug, we have debug mod on. Um, and you can do an underground setting. I'll just show you the default. This is like the vanilla ill winter um map gen and uh do, 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 do. okay so um it's going to now generate a, a random map um and you'll notice the that we were just looking at ill winter graphics on a map nuke structure um but now we're going to look at just like you know this is the default randomly generated map that gets spit out by um the, uh, the Illwinter engine. Uh, the, the challenges with this typically, historically, have been that um, start positions aren't evenly spaced out. They don't have the right number of cap circle provinces. Um, they Some players have huge amounts of area to expand. Others have few. Some are put in corners. Some are put in islands. Some are put in lakes. It's just a bunch of things. It's fine and great for single player. But for multiplayer, it really just doesn't give super fair starts. So this is, for those of you who have played uh, on the random maps before, this will put a twinkle in your eye, as this should look very familiar. Um, this is what it normally looks like. So you can see the Illwinter stuff is a lot, uh, not the Illwinter, the Map Nuke stuff was a lot different. It has like these smooth borders rather than the, the craggy borders here that are common to the Illwinter style maps. Anyway, this is the the kind of default Map Nuke, uh, not Map Nuke, um, the default ill winter ones. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the cave system here, because um, this is of course the other big change. Um, eyes of God. Hopefully Pythium doesn't overcast me here, as the AI is wont to do. Um, did we wait? Do we have the global? 
Pythium overcast me, I swear to God. All right, let's overcast them again. I'm going to alchemize. To hell with these. Ooh, that goes a lot faster now. Holy crap. Look how fast it alchemizes. It's dangerously fast. Um, but uh, casting eyes of God, I'll be able to show you um, the underground system and things like that. Um, and I'll, I'll explain to you how the, the underground system works when you're making maps and hosting games and things like that. And then we'll talk about the planes, which is, of course, the other big feature. And All right, we have successfully put up Eyes of Debug, or Eyes of God. So you can now see the, the portals to the underworld. Now, if you right-click on a... I'm sorry, if you left-click on a portal, it'll take you underground. And it's actually kind of cool graphics underground. I love the sprite work they have here. Um... So yeah, these look really cool. There's all sorts of different ones. There's uh, crystal caves, uh, normal caves, uh, mushroom or forest caves, a bunch of different things. Uh, drip caves, I forget what these are. Maybe it's like mountainous um, terrain, something like that. So anyway, very cool. And a lot of times it's kind of like a network. Occasionally there's like a lone cave province or something. And you can wander around here, conquer stuff, and then head back up. Oh, it is right click. Um, if you want to go into a cave, you would just like take a guy. Um, oops. Uh, you take a guy and you left click to move into the, the cave system. So that's how you traverse back and forth between the, the realms. You can also traverse, like go back and forth by clicking up here in the top right to alternate between these. And then there's Nexus. These are the ones that are by kind of default included. You don't have to have a cave layer. Um, but in the vanilla map gen, if you don't have a cave layer, you won't have caves. So in, um, while that is how it is in the vanilla map gen, that is not a rule for the game. So like for map nuke, um, or if you're doing a hand-drawn map or porting in some of the old ones, they will have, as was the uh, customary and and proper in the case of Dominions 5 and 4 and 3, uh, there'd be caves, but they were on the single layer of the map that existed. And that's totally still fine, right? So you can still have maps on this layer. It's just when um, the Dominion 6 engine is generating maps, it won't put them there. But that doesn't mean it's necessarily wrong. That's just not where they put them. So um, if you're playing on a random map, if you want to go in a cave, you actually have to go into the cave system. Um, but that's not the case for hand-drawn maps. Now, um, the question, there's another question which will pop up, which is, can you do custom cave layers? And the answer is yes, um, but asterisk, right? So this cave layer called the Realm Beneath, um, this will only exist if it's generated when you start a map. And I'll show you the, so here's where you pick the map. This is if you do a random size, or you know, if you do a random map, you pick the size here, or you can load a map and pick one of the custom maps. Hopefully there will be a lot more. There's gonna be maps that are gonna fill up the workshop too. So you can get these, but these maps are not going to load in underground by default for the most part. Um, if you want an underground, you can select it here. So I could have a hand-drawn map that is from Dominions 3, does not have an underground system. Um, is If I do not pick none for underground, if I pick any of these, it will automatically generate an underground map and attach it to that legacy, um, you know, Dominions 3 map that we brought in with like random connections and stuff. Um, that should, you know, more or less make some sense. Um, so that's pretty interesting. So you can basically attach an underground layer to any of the ported, and there's hundreds, there's a hundreds of previous Dominions maps, and a lot of them are gorgeous, like Pymus maps. Oh, they're beautiful. Executor has great maps. I'm trying to think who are all the, the great map makers. Um, I'm not sure who all the great ones are. I, I know I'm omitting some. I mean, there's a ton of maps though. I've got one cool map. Um, there's maps that have been like kind of ported from uh, Battle of Westnoth and things like that. There's a bunch of great maps. There's a bunch of great 1v1 maps too. And that's another thing I'm excited about to go on a short rabbit trail is that when you're like, you want to enter the game lobby, there's going to be a plenty of 1v1s that you can probably just join and play a whole multiplayer game in an afternoon. Um, so um, for those maps, you're going to want a good multiplayer friendly 1v1 map. Um, and you'll probably want something better than just a random map generated from Dominions, I would think.
So those maps will be like one of the great ones for that is the short gauntlet. Uh, I don't know if we've ported that to Dominion Six yet, but it'll anybody can do it, and it will be available, I'm sure, shortly after release of Dominion's uh, Six. So, uh, yeah, there's uh, a bunch of options uh, for custom maps, and any custom map you can add an underground layer, or you don't have to, right? So if you want to add, like, here's a map nuke map, we don't have to put an uh, underground layer. You click this. It's not super clear what's highlighted. But if you just click this black box, it's going to select none, and then you won't have any underground layer. Now, if you do a custom map, custom maps can have any number of layers. What do I mean by that? I mean, we could make a custom map, and I think I've got one here that has, I think, this nine-player test. I'm going to click, so this is a nine-player test game. I'm clicking no underground layout, okay? We're turning that off. And we're going to make a game here. And I'll do this so they don't overcast me for Eyes of God again. I made the, the, the other player a human. Um, so it, it didn't, you see, it didn't go through any generation. It wasn't like generating map. None of that, because none of this is random. Nevertheless, uh, there is an unknown plane here. And we will see that un unknown plane shortly. Okay, so we've cast Eyes of God, and we can now see that there is indeed an unknown plane. And this is uh, the map Nuke Underground. And you can see Nuke has gone and made uh, all these really cool doodads for the underground um, art style. He's got crystal caves and everything. It's beautiful. I love what he's done. So, um, yeah, this is wonderful. Um, if, if we come to uh, the surface... You'll notice uh, this is called cave. I've got my mouse hovered over. It's not called the realm beneath, and it's the second plane. You can have as many of these as you want, right? So you can make, you know, like there's some really cool maps. Uh, a few of them have been on my channel where you're playing like a galaxy, and there's like, it's like, you know, a huge galaxy, and there's like planets in it, or not really a galaxy. It's more like a solar system. Well, I don't know. I think there are multiple solar systems. I, Who knows? It's definitely not a full galaxy, but there's planets is the point. And the planets have like, um, you know, a bunch of different provinces on each of them. And it was really cool. Um, but if you wanted to, you could still do it that way. But you could also have it where like there's now portals to different planets. And each planet is its own plane. So when you're in your plane, you just see that. You could also do it if you want to do like a Warhammer thing. You could have like you know, all the, the demon realms or places in the void or something that you go to. And those are just places that you expand in, right? So there's all sorts of different layers you could go to and conquer. Um, and so that, that's a kind of cool thing. Um, now you might say, okay, well, how is that actually different mechanically? Like if we, if I have this plane down here and this plane up here, how are these actually different in the game? And the short answer is they're not. Um, in the current implementation, these two places are, they might as well be on one map. It's just one map broken up into two different places and the connections run between them, right? So this is a connection between the planes that'll take you up to this province and you can go back down here. So in some sense, you know, you could just draw these maps side by side and do arrows connecting the different things. Um, but... I think this is, first of all, planes are going to be like how to implement planes well in Dominion 6. I want to emphasize how complicated it is to do well because there's all sorts of cancer that can emerge. Like imagine it's hard to go to a plane. You have to cast some very fancy spell. and what, But once you get there, you're the only one there. So you could have like Lemuria or Airmore or some other cancer nation set up shop in the realm of death. And, like, you can never get them out of the game, and they put up, like, Utter Dark or something, and then stream out of there and conquer the world. It's a kind of cool story, but would be cancer to play against. So, um, you know, planes are going to be tricky, is what I'm trying to say. How to do it well and not have it ruin the game. And I think, actually, just putting in this baseline functionality where you can have different planes is, like, a great start. I think the, the things I'm hoping that Ill Winter adds... Because they're going to patch the game in a bunch of things. Doesn't mean they'll do what I'm about to suggest, but I think they're thinking along these lines. 
is hopefully they add some ways that we can, through spells and through modding, interact with these planes. So what do I mean? Imagine that this place, because we could add we could add this today, a plane called Inferno, and every province in there is, uh, you know, like it would probably, you know, you would probably keep the same tile set unless you hand you could hand draw it too and make it like all fiery looking and stuff, but you could have like a place called Inferno. And you can even do this today where you, because there's a, a flag you can put on provinces where you mark them as hot. So they'll be, they'll have extra heat scales. So you could do that for all the places in Inferno and for the, like the, uh, the ice uh, hell, uh, Kokotos or whatever it's called, that could have cold. But you could do more potentially. And this, I think, this I'm not sure if we can do today. I have to really talk to the modders. Um, because given, you know, a, a, a rubber band and, a, you know, a couple sticks and some duct tape, they can do some amazing things with modding. Um, and there have been a ton. This is another thing. It's, uh, Somber has a channel. Go check it out for Dominions. He talks some about all the new modding stuff. Because, guys, there has been... this. There's so many things, I think, that people aren't going to see is, like, new wish players or people new to the game they're not going to see all the tremendous stuff that's in dominion 6 like there's so many new modding commands and the mods that existed in dominions 5 are like game altering and amazing dominions enhanced is amazing you know somber's warhammer mod is extensive and amazing aether nomads hellenica is mind-blowingly weird and funky and like completely changes the game and it's amazing so you have these huge kind of mods and communities around these mods. Um, and what they're going to be able to do is going to greatly increase going into Dominion 6. There's been a ton of new mod commands. I'm not going to you know bore you by rattling what they all are. But hopefully what we'll see is either we can do it with the current set of mod commands or maybe there's a few more that are needed. But like you'll be able to flag certain provinces or maybe everything in a plane and there'll be a, like, you can flag a spell that will always go up in that plane. Like, it could be you go to the world, realm of death, and, you know, there's always Wailing Winds up, and there's always Rigor Mortis up. Right? That would be really cool. Right? Um, or you go to Inferno, and it's not only just hotter, but Heat from Hell's always cast. And maybe if, like, the temperature scale gets all the way up to five, then you start having Firestorm getting cast. Or things like that. The problem is those things are really hard to balance, and I feel like Illwinter putting that in the base game is like really risky. And I would have like, I mean, I'm a veteran. I've played a lot of this game. I don't really know how that would play out. So I think a cooler way is like set up the infrastructure, create some mod commands so that players can do it, and then or like modders can do it, and see what's fun and what people like, and uh, like let map makers make some of this stuff. See what's fun and see what people like, and then think about bringing that into maybe like Dominion 7 or patching it into Dominion 6 as maybe part of the base game. Like, it would be really cool if you could go to Hades, you know, and like to the Land of the Dead or to to the, the, the Infernal Dimensions or to the Elvish Lands. I forget exactly what those are called. So... um Closing up the discussion on planes, you can add all of these planes I'm talking about in custom maps right now. There's the, the capability to add the planes. The things we're not totally sure yet, some people might be sure, I'm not sure yet, are exact with the mod commands we have. Um, I know you can't target planes probably, I don't think yet, the way that maybe it would be cool to like add spells to everything in a plane. But you could, you can target provinces, like province numbers. So you could set up a mod to work with a particular map. And I think you could have something spawn in that province that's going to cause a global, you know, a local enchantment to go up every time. So I don't know what's in the world of the possible. But uh, eventually, I, I believe that we're going to be able to have it where you could play on a map where there actually is an inferno and you go there and there's like demons all over the place and stuff. I think this is likely impossible to happen in Dominion 6. Um, but it's I think it's going to be something that players are going to tinker with. And there will be mods and maps and stuff that you'll, you'll get this on. But I think that's a big thing to look forward to. I think that'll be a ton of fun once it gets implemented. Um, yeah. So anyway, we've been talking about maps. 
Um, we've talked about the planes, which is a big uh, a big difference or a big change. We've talked about all the different ways to kind of make maps with, you know, randomly generated, hand drawn, or like Map Nuke. And then with Map Nuke, they can use Map Nuke graphics or they can use Ill Winter graphics. But even with custom maps, you know, most of the custom maps can probably use Ill Winter graphics uh, to do terraforming. We'll have to see uh, exactly how well that works. But um, talked about the planes. Uh, is there anything else I really need to mention? Uh, I don't think so, or it's not coming to me right now. So uh, what I'll say in closing then is um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what map makers do with all of the new features in Dominion 6. I Hopefully we see people still playing on a lot of legacy, beautiful hand-drawn maps. Um, I think there's going to be less incentive to make totally new ones of those. Or if you do, it's going to be a lot of extra work to support terraforming. I'll be interested to see how people figure out how to use this tool I was talking about that like Loggy used to take custom like hand-drawn maps, which maybe you can crank out really quick because quick, you're just like doing structure and then feed it in and let Illwinter generate like Illwinter, the Illwinter engine populate the, you know, the doodads and the textures. Um, but yeah, anyway, I think that there's a lot of really interesting things that can happen. Um, for people just buying the game, you might be a little impatient. Like you might, first of all, we need to get as many of the old maps ported as we can. Um, and that's a really easy process. It's not hard though. People will be putting up on the steam workshop very quickly. Um, but what I'm trying to say is you might need to be a little patient. Um, you know, there, um, it, the real potential of what the new engine can do, I think is going to be revealed over the course of the next like year, year and a half. So, um, yeah, it's pretty exciting. Oh, one final thing I did. This is what we'll end on. That's the funny note. Um, there's also a funny feature where you can map editor, uh, oh, sorry, map creator. You can use a blueprint. And you can like load a blueprint. So I could do like, like we can have little hearts and then we can have like a little Cupid arrow here. And so this could be my blueprint and we can make a map. Uh, you can load in like Loggy had one with some ducks he put in that was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, you can also draw out the shape of what you want. Notice I didn't draw any provinces. That's just the general shape of water and land. Um, and we'll show you what it looks like. Wait, whoops. What? No. Did I, I hit escape? I'm going to pause and redo it. Okay, so here you can see it. it uh, here's like the heart we drew. I, I changed it a little bit because I had to redo it. Um, and you can see my artwork's not great, but you know, you can see the heart here with the arrow through it anyway. So you can draw in features and it's going to be like, okay, this is how much water you want. This is how much land you want. This is where you want the land and the water. Yeah. Here you can see what I drew. Um, there's a score for accuracy. Higher means land, uh, land mass will more accurately follow the blueprint. So you can see, yeah, we have it on a pretty low setting. We could turn it up and make it a bit higher, but, um, but yeah, so you can kind of draw this out and then it will randomly or not randomly, it'll, you know, fill in all the, the rest of the, the things. Um, yeah. And then I think, I, this I'm not 100% sure on, um, the fact that you see planes and stuff here, this is because this map is created in the D6M format. So that doesn't mean this is all going to be planes. That means these are planes until it actually generates, um, you know, an instance of the game. And once that's happened, it'll actually randomly assign, you know, the starting province types to each of these things. So the idea is you get like more reusability out of the same map. Um, anyway, um, that's a short overview. Um, if you're just starting a game, I would recommend going to the Steam Workshop, getting a custom map, because I think they're more beautiful and playing on that. Um, if not, I'd say backup next best thing is play on a... Uh, map nuke map we'll make sure to get some of them up in the workshop in the next you know week or two and um i think those are best but you know also play the the vanilla randomly generated maps 
Um, but try all of them. See what you like. Uh, my personal thing is I, I get... I'm too much of a multiplayer person, and I get too frustrated with unbalanced starts on the vanilla map. But uh, but other people love it. So uh, try all the things out, see what you like. Um, and then also uh, be patient, right? Come check back in the community. And this is one of the things, like, if you're new to Dominions, guys, this is a small indie developer. Uh, it's two guys um, and a big community. And a lot of times they make tools and the community uses them. So there's a lot of things if you're coming from like a triple A experience to this, you're like, whoa, there's not all the things perfectly ready at release. No, that's not how this works, okay? Uh, they make tools, we use them, uh, and we have a really fucking cool community and a really cool group of uh, tools and outputs of the tools and cool mods and all these things. So uh, if you're new, I uh, hope you stick around, check it out, hope you find it fun. Uh, if you're a returning vet, I hope you're excited about seeing what some of the new features will be, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.